This is Laurie Moore Moore with Texas Brave and Strong. Tidbits of Texas history you never learned in school. Today's podcast is titled, Oxen Can't Balance on Three Feet. So how on earth did a blacksmith shoe them? Despite what you might have seen in the movies, oxen were the best beasts of burden to pull the wagons of settlers moving west. Horses weren't strong enough. Horses and mules required that you carry their feed, taking up precious space and adding extra weight to your wagon. Oxen were stronger and could graze along the trails to Texas. But shoeing them, (laughs) that is, keeping them well shod, could be a challenge. While it wasn't a big issue if you had a blacksmith shop nearby, if you were traveling, shoeing your oxen required some muscle and ingenuity. And the process was downright humorous. Let me give you an example. I'm pulling a page from my novel, Gone to Dallas, The Storekeeper, 1856 to 1861. The book begins with Sarah, the main character, traveling to Texas from Tennessee with her new husband, Morgan. Along the way, they stop in Little Rock, Arkansas, and realize their eight oxen need new shoes. So, let's begin. Sarah asked to go with Morgan to the blacksmith. Oxen can't balance on three legs, so I'm curious about how they're shod. The blacksmith, a bald, brawny, olive-skinned man in a black apron, was eager to show off his skills for Sarah. First, you got to remember that oxen have cloven or divided hooves. Each hoof needs two shoes, one for each side of the hoof. You're right. They can't balance on three legs. So here's what I use. He walked over to a wooden device with ropes and large leather slings. Sarah noticed the blacksmith's little finger on his left hand was just a stump. This is my mechanical stock. His assistant led an animal into it. The device lifted the ox off the ground and rotated it onto its side, feet extended. Oh, my gosh! Sarah shook her head at the outlandish position of the animal. Now I can reach all four feet. They watched the blacksmith nail two crescent-shaped shoes on each of the ox's four feet, whistling while he worked. Then he rotated the ox back to normal position and released it from the stock. Don't know why, but my whistling seems to keep them calm, he grinned. Tried whistling to calm my children, but (laughs) didn't work. What about on the trail, Sarah asked. Can you shoe an ox without a stock to hold it? Uh Uh-huh. It's just harder and takes multiple men. You dig a trench and use ropes to turn the ox on its side or on its back and lower it into the trench. Then you can shoe it. The ox isn't too happy about it, but it works in a pinch. Sarah tried to visualize an ox upside down in a trench. The scene that came to mind was a, a long trench with all eight of their oxen on their backs, feet waving in the air. (laughs) What a funny sight that would be. Sarah and Morgan watched as the blacksmith finished shoeing their eight oxen. I figure you know these big beasts have tender feet. If they break a hoof, they most likely die. Any trouble with shoes, you can make a pair of moccasins for them until you can have them shod again. Make a rawhide bag, fit it to their feet, tie it on real secure, won't last long in muddy conditions, but it might save your ox. Hmm, Morgan nodded. Good to know. Our oxen seem pretty smart. They follow my verbal commands, turn right when I say gee, and left with haw, respond to some gestures, too. The blacksmith looked thoughtful for a moment. Hmm, smart? Reckon they are just as smart as they need to be. This brief reading from my book, Gone to Dallas, gives you an idea of how pioneers handled shoeing oxen, both in town and on the trail. The mental picture of an ox on its back in a hole with four feet waving in the air makes me smile every time I think about it. A bit more complex than changing a tire today, wouldn't you say? 
This has been Laurie Moore Moore with Texas Brave and Strong, the best little podcast in Texas. New episodes twice each month. Find Texas Brave and Strong on most major podcast sites and on my website, lauriemoremore.com. Be sure to check out my Texas historical novel, Gone to Dallas, The Storekeeper, 1856 to 1861. Thanks for listening. Y'all come back.